Hello and welcome to What is Hyperbaric Oxygen? My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. To understand what hyperbaric oxygen is and why we would use it, we first need to understand a little bit about atmospheric pressure. For example, if you have traveled to some place that is in a, a higher altitude, you'll notice that there's changes that occur. And oftentimes we talk about having difficulty with breathing at a higher altitude, etc., because the air, quote, is thinner. Well, what we mean is that there's less oxygen particles. So if you look at this diagram here, you notice the person that's up there in the top of the mountain, there's fewer oxygen particles up there than there is down here at the lower altitude. So what happens in the higher atmosphere, there's lower pressure from the air at a lower atmosphere, so sea level, for example, we would have a higher pressure from the atmosphere. The higher pressure from the atmosphere also creates more oxygen that is going to be available. So you can see an increase in the number of oxygen molecules there at that higher pressure. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how oxygen diffuses in the blood. So here is our typical oxygen diffusion. We have these red blood cells running around in the bloodstream, and then we have oxygen that is coming to those red blood cells in the lung. And it diffuses across that alveolar capillary membrane, and the oxygen binds to hemoglobin, making a saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. So this would be our normal process of how oxygen diffuses in the blood. Now, if we were to increase the pressure of the oxygen, so and increase our atmospheric pressure, then what would happen is more of that oxygen that gets to the lung would diffuse across into the blood and would connect up with red blood cells and be available then at the tissue level. So this is what hyperbaric oxygen therapy does. The patient literally goes to a place where they can be in a higher atmospheric pressure environment. So in this case here, it's a tube. Sometimes it's an entire room where patients are wearing hoods. But whatever the case may be, we're going to increase the atmospheric pressure, and then therefore that's going to increase the amount of oxygen available and the amount of oxygen that gets into the tissues and is available at the tissue level. A lot of things that ox hyperbaric oxygen therapy is used for, one, for example, is carbon monoxide poisoning. So you see what's happening in carbon monoxide poisoning is instead of those hemoglobin molecules binding up oxygen, they're binding up carbon monoxide, and we form carboxyhemoglobin. And that's a bad thing because if carbon monoxide is binding that oxygen binding site, that means oxygen can't. So if we increase the amount of pressure of oxygen in the bloodstream with hyperbaric oxygen, it'll help to knock those carbon monoxide molecules off of the hemoglobin so that oxygen then can bind. It's also used in wound healing. So if we have wounds, especially one like this, where we have a necrotic core to the wound, we're not getting a lot of oxygen to that area, obviously, or it wouldn't be necrotic. So if we increase the amount of oxygen in the bloodstream by using hyperbaric oxygen, then we're going to be able to get more oxygen to the wound, and the wound will heal better. You may have heard of even athletes using hyperbaric oxygen to help them to recover faster from injuries that they've had. Hyperbaric oxygen is also used in patients who have decompression sickness from scuba diving. So the scuba diver comes up too quickly, and obviously if the pressure is lower on top of the mountain, higher at sea level, it's going to be even higher under the sea. So we come up from that real high pressure to a lower pressure, and then the patient is going to have decompression sickness. So we put them in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and we increase the pressure. So we increase that atmospheric pressure for them, and then we can slowly bring it back up again so that they are not getting the decompression sickness. 
Now, where we've heard a lot about hyperbaric oxygen therapy lately is with COVID and severe hypoxemia. So in our patients who had COVID and severe hypoxemia, we've looked for a lot of ways to say, geez, how can we increase the amount of oxygen to this patient? Geez, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how to support the patient with severe hypoxemia. So let's take a look at some different things we can do. And Hyperbaric oxygen therapy was one of the things that was suggested as a method of creating or treating severe hypoxemia in patients who have COVID. Now, in this study, what they found was that the time to correct hypoxemia went from nine days with your standard oxygen therapy or intubation down to three days with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Other outcomes, such as ARDS, duration of mechanical ventilation, and mortality at 30 days, were not different between these two groups. However, we have to wonder, though, what the long-term differences might be in neurological outcomes, cardiovascular outcomes, and respiratory function when we increase the amount of oxygen available to the tissues. So were these things potentially improved as a result of using hyperbaric oxygen? Well, we don't know yet. Okay. Hopefully we'll see some studies in the future that will tell us a little bit more about these long-term outcomes. We do know in the short term it increases oxygenation for the patient. We're getting a shorter period of time to get rid of that hypoxemia, but we don't know if it's going to have any long-term effect on the patient. Here's the reference if you'd like to pull the article and read more about hyper baric oxygen as an adjunct therapy for patients with COVID-19 severe hypoxemia. Thanks for joining me for What is Hyperbaric Oxygen? My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.